Okay, so I think a good starting point here is uh, the Navigator. And in version 16, we introduced a new workflow navigator. And the workflow navigator is really designed for, for new users. Um, you know, we've gotten a lot of feedback that with all of our different pieces of software that we've developed over the years that new people are having some difficulty, you know, finding the particular workflows that were of interest to them. So we introduced the, a workflow navigator that has molecular biology entry points, in genomics and transcriptomics. Um, of course, once you learn which software programs you, you want to go into, um, this is less useful. So we did add a little link here where it says organize by application. So new in version 17 is really just a list of the available applications that you can launch from the navigator. And I find myself, even though I use the software all the time and for many years, um, I find the navigator to be useful just to kind of quickly launch different programs. And you can see here that we have Seekman Engine and Seekman Ultra, and that's where we're going to spend most of our time today uh, in these two programs. Uh, a good starting point here will be uh, Seekman Ultra. So I'm just going to open this up. And I've already, it was already open in my, in my uh, tray here, so I'll just diminish this just for now. And I know that we've got a little resolution. I'm, I'm gonna see if I get the thumbs up from Sharon that she can see the entire window, that we're not losing the right edge of it. Okay, so something that's new with the uh, LaserGene applications is a welcome page. And so the welcome page will be, uh, you'll see this in Ultra, in Megaline Pro and Protein 3D, and it helps guide you to what you're, what you're trying to do, whether it's a new assembly or opening an assembly, um, and the open assembly then will allow you to go and use a file browser to find a new assembly, or you can see that here are some recent documents. And I find myself now that when I work with a handful, you know, say 10 to 12 different assemblies, that this becomes very, very uh, useful to me. Now, the starting point for folks will be a little bit different depending on your experience. So again, if you're, if you're in the navigator and you're a brand new person, you, know, you, you might very well, uh, be organized by workflow and we'll just go to into the genomics and for example if I'm going to do a de novo genome assembly and I click this workflow it's going to go right into the new Seekman engine wizard and I'm going to again resize this just so to make sure we're not cutting off our right edge and so this new uh, engine wizard then um, has a little bit different, um, some different terminology, and it also breaks things apart depending on um, this type of sequence data. So you'll see that with the Novo Genome Assembly and Editing, we have Sanger entry point and NGS based, and that will guide me down different areas in the wizard. And when we look at uh, NGS based, we can see there's uh, de novo, there's also uh, this reference guided. Um, hybrid reference guided de novo genome assembly. That's a new set of algorithms um, that will use a reference sequence to first guide the assembly and then de novo assemble the novel areas in your sequence genome. And that replaces, we had a previous workflow that was similar, it was an auto gap closure, and we've replaced this with a, a new series of algorithms. Um, we also have a short read polishing of a long um, read draft genome. We have, uh, again, some of our own algorithms that can take a, a draft genome that still has lots of errors in it, a lot of indels, and very quickly go through, identify those, and clean those up and, and produce a very accurate um, genome. So this is a brand new workflow that, that is typically used with uh, long read draft genomes. So we have these different entry points. I'm just going to kind of click through to give you a feel for the, the new wizards. We have metagenomics. And you'll see that we have Sanger now going through this wizard. And so for new users, what we found is that the approach with Sanger data with Seekman Pro was wizardless. And so getting started, and it could be quite a challenge if you had a reference guided assembly or a more challenging assembly or didn't quite uh, have the hardware in place to do the assembly that you wanted. And so we're gonna redirect folks um, through the wizard, whether it's Sanger or NGS or um, or other data types. Variant analysis and resequencing, this is alignment of sequence data to a reference for the purpose of calling variations. 
And you can see we have some sub workflows, whole genome and things like amplicon and exome sequencing. And then this last workflow is really a brand new workflow that we've introduced and it's VCF file analysis. So the typical use case would be that you've done a variant analysis through a pipeline and you have VCF files that you would like to compare to each other. And so we'll take a look at this workflow as well. And so the wizard is laid out a little bit differently um, and it gives you more feedback. You'll notice if you're familiar with our current wizard, it didn't always give you the feedback that you needed about particular workflows. So you'll see that as we go through this wizard, there are more tool tips that tell you what the different workflows do. So I'm just going over um, you know, the, 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 the de novo. And let's just go down this de novo NGS base to start with. And so I have input sequences. Um, and it's, it's just gonna ask me for some inputs. We can either file browse or drag and drop um, sequences in. So I'll go to my demo data folder and let's just grab, I'm gonna purposely overload my assembly. One of the common technical issues that we'll encounter is that sometimes when you're assembling things like viruses or genomes or bacterial genomes, you have a lot more data than you actually, actually need. It's not, not uncommon to have coverages that are in the hundreds or thousands in some cases. And, and that can cause some, uh, some technical issues. So this wizard let me load in, um, you know, all these, uh, these are uh, FASTQ files, Illumina FASTQ. And this is some salmonella genome data. And we can see here now maximum total reads. I have a tool tip that says, hey, you know, you can limit your input reads. And for de novo genome, really targeting 50 to 100x try to get that to stay longer, is ideal for most de novo genomes. And so we do by default put a little limiter on here. This is 10 million. That could still be an awful lot of data, but we'll just go with it like this. And then we have different trimming options. So this is all similar to the previous wizard, right? So I won't, I enter a genome size and that really is the approximate length. It doesn't have to be exact. Some basic parameters to set. Right, so this is all, all if, you've, if you've run assemblies in our current version 16 wizard, this should all look pretty familiar to you. So everything here is the, you know, the same. Uh, let's just call this a de novo NGS genome. And we specify a name and then an output. So I have my demo data here and some assemblies. Okay, so everything looks pretty, you know, pretty similar here. So now we get to really a, a new page that we that we designed. And what we've learned from our genomics folks is that uh, they really can have trouble when they try the software out and evaluate whether or not they have adequate hardware in place for the data sets that they would like to assemble. And in the last 10 years, I would say that on average, computer uh, power has actually gone down for our average users. More people have switched to from heavyweight desktop computers to lighter weight laptop computers. And so doing assemblies in that local computer of any size become more and more difficult. And so what we've done is, is developed a way to evaluate uh, the hardware on a computer and the input data. So we're gonna read this, and I'll see if I'll get a magic marker here. Um, yeah, there's a, highlighter here. So we can, in a de novo assembly, the main, uh, uh, the, 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 the main hardware requirement really is memory, RAM for doing the de novo assembly. So we look at the input bases. So there's 1.4 gigabases of input. We get an estimated coverage and this is at 296 X, so almost 300 X coverage. And then we just do a calculation of memory and of, of how much memory it's gonna take. So 9.4 is the estimate gigs of RAM and how much is available on the computer. And it'll give you some feedback to try to improve the success rate for your assembly. So in this case, it's saying you may need nine gigs of RAM. This computer is a desktop, it's got 32, but it does recognize that you have deep coverage. And so you might actually get just as good an assembly if you go back uh, and we gotta get rid of this highlighter here. Um, you know, so if you go back and reduce the amount of input reads, you may actually get better performance. And it gives us a recommendation now. It will say, you know, we recommend a run on this computer, or in some cases, if your computer does not have the adequate hardware in place, it will recommend to run this assembly on the cloud. 
the cloud computer has about 120 gigs of RAM and plenty of hard disk and uh, so it can handle quite a bit larger de novo assemblies and some of the larger projects than even this particular desktop. And so we get this feedback. So I can go back to this input page page now, and I could decide to, um, there, I still have my highlighting there. It's interesting. Oh, let's see if I can get rid of that. That's going to be, how do I get rid of erase all drawings? There we go. <laughs> um, so I can do things like uh, reduce the number of input files. You know, and it'll update this page and now it'll say, well, now I have 63x estimated coverage and you know, it'll take four and a half gigs of RAM and recommended to run this computer. So so this feedback uh, we are hoping will, you know, greatly increase the chance for success for assemblies so that if you don't have the hardware, I could choose. I want to run this on the cloud. Now, I will point out that our, our demoes that are trying out our software will get um, a handful. I think it's five free cloud assemblies to try it out um our sales reps have can give you pricing they'll they'll bundle up uh, the cloud prices are dropping you know each year so they're they're really quite reasonable to run you know a lot of these assemblies up in the cloud anyway so cost isn't that much of a of a factor uh, but i will point out that um, to run on the cloud you do need to be logged in and there's a, a little login key at the bottom right or bottom left and this will tell you um, this will just be your username and password that you set. So you'll, when you when you create an account with DNA Star, you'll set your own password. So that's kind of been updated too with version 17. Um, and then you can, as long as you're logged in and you have assemblies, I've got 108 left. Um, I can run an assembly on the cloud. And the way it works then is I can just click Run Assembly on the Cloud, and I get Cloud Monitor. And cloud monitor, you can see this is all the assemblies I've done uh, recently, and I did some this morning, and this was some templated, um, three different strains aligned with Salmonella template. So strain one, two, three, then the fourth product compares all three other a uh, star product where I can compare. And what's nice about this is it's all automatic. It's going to upload the data securely and very fast up to the cloud, run the assembly, and then automatically download it to my folder. So I can kind of forget about it and the assembly will run and come and I can kind of monitor it and see, make sure that it's everything's going okay. And it will go back to this assembly output folder um, that I've that I've designated. Okay, so it'll it'll go back there automatically. It also will go um, to the cloud, it'll make a cloud folder for me called slash assemblies so you'll have a, a cloud folder on your cloud data drive again i didn't have to do anything it's just going to do this automatically but if you start using the cloud i could go up there and browse and now we're actually looking at my cloud data drive so i've got all my testing data sets here um, and you can see here's that assemblies folder and those those are all the assemblies that i've run recently and so, but I didn't have to go and make folders or anything. It'll be for new users. Um, they'll just be able to hit assemble. It'll go up, come back down, and when the assembly's completed, they'll be able to do their analysis. So it's a really nice system. It's super handy if you want to run lots of assemblies from different locations. Um, you can run multiple samples at once. It really allows you for high throughput, and you don't have to worry about running out of resources on a, on a local computer. So that's one of the really big changes then for that really affects probably our, our NGS folks more than anybody else is really easy and seamless cloud assembly if you if you choose to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna just we'll come back to this and, and keep an eye on it. Um, I'm gonna go back to my navigator and let's just look at another another workflow. And so we've got a uh, de novo genome, uh, this hybrid guided de novo genome assembly, uh, and I'll launch this. So this is a, 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 it's not entirely new. The concept isn't entirely new, uh, but the algorithms are, are completely new. And this particular workflow, this hybrid, will ask you for a reference sequence. And so what you can do is pick the closest reference sequence. So when folks have de novo assemblies, 
they often don't know, should I do a de novo assembly or should I do a um, use the best possible reference? And really the answer usually is try both and see if, if the reference is close, it may get you a lot closer than uh, just doing a de novo assembly to a completed genome. And so in this case, we can, uh, I've got some reference genomes here. And these are some E. coli genomes. And, and some of the testing, they're all kind of related. Shigella is a little, not quite as related, but related. But here are some different genomes. And you can try a genome, and it will assemble it and find novel insertions and deletions and try to resolve those. And it can resolve quite a few of them. And depending on how close the genome is, you may come up with a scaffold with only a couple of uh, contigs in it. Or if it's more distant, the project I have is this BL21. Um, that I, that I, that we're gonna that we're gonna open, uh, and then you get a uh, when this is done, there will be some uh, an assembly summary, and I can open the project to look at uh, the assembly. And what that will do from Seekman Engine is actually launch Seekman Ultra, and I'm just gonna go right to that project, and we can see here that Ultra has quite a different look and feel than um, Seekman Pro did. So again, we have this welcome page and you can see there's tabs across the top. And the tabs are projects that I have already opened in, in Ultra. Um, Ultra is a 64-bit program, uh, so it will open these large projects a lot faster than, than Seekman Pro. It can be a much, much more responsive when we're doing genomes and you know it could be human genome sized projects or bacterial genomes. Uh, I can have multiple projects open. So here is a hybrid project, and then I have a uh, an Arabidopsis genome, and I have a human exome here, and I have a Sanger uh, test project here as well using Sanger data. And so we'll have again a, a webinar next week that really focuses more just on Ultra and how it's you know compare and contrast to Seekman Pro. Um, today we'll just get kind of a, a feel for for how, how the program works. Um, when I'm doing a, uh, in this case, this this hybrid uh, workflow, the end result are scaffolds. And so over here on the right are a number of scaffolds. And this is called the Explorer. I'm gonna expand this a little bit so you can kind of, so like Seekman Pro, this Explorer lists all your contigs and in a de novo assembly or a hybrid assembly, the contigs, Thank you, Sharon. So the scaffolds then are, uh, we can visualize um, in Seekman Ultra, and by selecting in this Explorer, um, I can open different views very quickly over here, over here, where there's an alignment view, and again, there's tool tips, and in this case, there's a strategy view, and the strategy view is what's really interesting with the scaffold, and you can see uh, there's a zoom control, so there's two contigs in view with a gap that I have highlighted in between them. And I can zoom in and out. So there's zoom bars. Here I'm zooming out to see the contigs. So I can see I have multiple contigs. Um, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I can also navigate. There's a search icon here that expands. So I can go from contig to contig. And so oftentimes, you know, I want to see the gaps in my scaffold. So this is a common kind of a de novo uh, approach. Now there also is some improvement to it, and I'll just I'm just going to show you how this will work. If I wanted to close a gap there, there's a different different algorithms that we can use to align. But I could also add another sequence, and I'll just show you that there is the ability to select two contigs directly, add a sequence, and try to splice a sequence into that gap. Um, so that's kind of a, a, a de novo genome or hybrid reference guided de novo genome workflow that we would have. Um, there's more work that still, you know, we still have development teams, um, you know, working on on some of these aspects here. So we'll see, you know, over the next even few months, you know, further improvements to these workflows to make them easier in your hands. Okay, so let's go back um, to the welcome page, and you'll notice. The wizard is, for new users, the navigator to wizard helps guide people down a path um, more effectively, but current customers uh, might want to go right to Seekman Ultra, right? You're used to opening Seekman Pro. Um, you can also go right to Seekman Ultra, 
and start an assembly here. So if we stick on this kind of de novo um, theme, you know, for example, uh, Sanger ABI de novo. If I click on the workflow here, it's also going to open the wizard, except it's going to be a little bit, I'll resize here, it's going to be a shorter version of the wizard for a de novo assembly. Um, and I'm going to add some, some data, not that data, but here's just some sample reads. And I can run the assembly now. So there's enough, because the, 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 the Sanger data sets are small enough um, that we don't have to worry about hardware so much, especially for a de novo. Uh, we have the option to run this assembly now or go through the whole wizard. So I could click run, but on this particular data set, I know that there's vector that has to get trimmed, right? So I'm gonna, this is our demo data set that we've used here for forever. Um, so I can assemble it. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think GoToMeeting likes this little window right here. <laughs> That's, we'll try to fix that. Okay, so a de novo assembly, um, two wizard screens, I can click run, it automatically assigns a name to my project. And you can see that we have a little summary where the project is, the contig in 50, how many contigs there are, the number of reads assembled, that sort of thing. So we get this little summary. Um, my one contig is over here in the Explorer. I can show an alignment view of it. And you'll see that the alignment view in Ultra is quite a bit different than it was in Seekman Pro. There's quite a bit more information here. So I can zoom out and I get a coverage plot and I can see my reads at all different zoom levels. So now I have, uh, I'm zoomed out and they're just arrows. I can go back using these uh, toolbar icons to go back to more optimal zoom levels. Here's the traces, so I can view my traces. If I right click, I can expand all, to see all the traces. I can also zoom vertically to get more in view, or if I want my traces to be as big as I can, there's uh, view, uh, view extenders or expanders in the data tracks. And so I can make um, you know, my coverage plot higher. So I can really customize the view uh, quite a bit. And it allows me to edit. I can go in and make edits. I can select my consensus and delete a base. It'll nag me once and let me delete. I can show quality scores. So now I have quality scores that are present. I can export a consensus out. So I can do a contig, um, export consensus, select a range. So you'll see that a lot of these menu items are what we had in Seekman Pro as well. Split contigs in half, I can extend ends of trim contigs, um, delete bases, make edits, find errors in the, in the consensus. So let's make this a little bit more compact here. There's also this search tool that will allow me to find conflicts. And so I can use these arrows to move through this assembled Sanger data to find areas where we couldn't make a real confident call. And here's where we have a C and a gap in one of the reads. And so a lot of the tools that were very uh, helpful in Seekman Pro, we've tried to expose them more, bring them up more to the surface where they're a little bit more discoverable. So again, what's key with Seekman Ultra, just like it was with Seekman Pro, is that the Explorer is really what allows you, you have to keep something in focus here, and that's what controls what's in these views over here. Um, so there's a style panel here for the strategy views, for the, the editing, um, whether or not to, you know, what the colors should look like for mismatch bases. So those controls then, like our other, um, we call these rich client platform applications like Seekman Pro, the controls for what's visible in the views are over here on the right with the style. The tracks that are visible, we can turn these on and off. So I can simplify this view if I, if I want to. Um, I can remove things like pair consistency or split reads, which don't uh, apply sometimes to some of these data sets. So that is, um, again, this right-hand panel is very uh, important 
And it's important to remember to go back to the Explorer if I have multiple contigs to be able to navigate from contig to contig. So that's kind of a, a de novo project. Let's let's go and open, go back to the welcome page and open, and I'm gonna go and open one of these uh, Rabidopsis. And I'm just leaving that little nag screen, but that's for the first time user to let them know that the Explorer side panel is important to know that that controls what's in your views. So now this is a, a different type of a project. This is uh, the first project, the DeNovo, is a fully editable uh, seekmanpro.sqd project. This is a BAM assembly. So this is an alignment to a big genome. So we've got, uh, you know, let's kind of expand this length. They were both created in Engine, right? They were both created in Engine. So the workflow for this one, if we go back here, um, was the variant analysis resequencing whole genome. So this will go through our, uh, uh, we'll load a reference sequence in this case, we can download a genome package, right? And this is available now for both Sanger and NGS users. So you can have genome packages, VCF files, bed files, single or multiple sample, and I'll just kind of go through just to show you how. So this is a, uh, here's some Arabidopsis data. And so some, a few parameters. And then here are the different analysis options, calling SNPs and small variants, detecting copy number variation, detect structural variations. All we have to do is tell it uh, the type of organism or the type of ploidy that we expect and the gender, if that applies. And we'll just call this test uh, reference guided. And so reference guided assemblies, even with Sanger data, um, can be challenging. If you're, if you're aligning to a whole genome, that takes, uh, for our software, that takes disk space. So now you can align Sanger data to a whole chromosome, which you couldn't do in, in Seekman Pro, or a whole genome. Um, and the hardware check will again go through and look at your hardware. And in this case, the hardware that's required is more disk based. Uh, there is some memory requirement, but it really is as you load bigger genomes and more data, um, it looks at the, the disk space for temporary files. And so what I'm referring to here is, you know, so we're gonna look at the total length of the reference genome, um, the amount of coverage, this is about 50X, and it's gonna look right here for the disk space for the temporary files. And you can see it estimates about 60 gigs of free space you would need to run this Arabidopsis assembly. And again, depending on the computing that you have, if it's a laptop, you might not have, I know what my laptop looks like, I never have 50 to 100 gigs free, it's almost always full. And yeah, yeah, and this, so this, this big desktop here has lots and lots of space, my personal computer, not so much. And so when I run these assemblies um, for my, my personal computer, I'm almost always running them on the cloud um, because I know that I won't run into any kind of hardware issue. So, so again, we can run it on this computer. Uh, when it's done, it'll have a, a summary that allows me to launch it directly in Seekman Ultra. It'll, oop, we still have those, let's get rid of those. And so, now we get a little summary again, the coverage, the number of reference sequences, how many sequences aligned. And I'm just gonna select the longest chromosome here and go right to the alignment view. And we'll try to get a little bit more. And you can see some of the mismatch bases. Here is uh, features. And you can see how I can just navigate and kind of zoom. Here I'm zooming out and you can see all the features, right, that are coming into view. And I can launch a SNP table as well. So now there's a SNP table for this chromosome. I like to have my SNP table on the bottom. I'm just used to that. So you can grab these tabs and move them. I can also detach the view. So if I right click on a tab, I can detach it. So if I, right now I'm constrained because we're with the webinar running, I have a small area I can work with, but you know, with, if you have two monitors, 
you know, you can have your SNP table on one monitor and your alignment view on the other. Um, again, I can get back to my optimal zoom with one click. And the features are kind of blocking some of it. So I'm gonna go and try to pack some reads in. And there I can see reads. And there's a full filter dialog, just like there was with Seekman Pro. This is almost the same as in Seekman Pro, the filtering. So I can go and apply filters and say, well, I want to look at indels that are five base pairs at least. So I can apply a filter. And now it's interactive. So I can click in the SNP report and it will immediately go to that point in the assembly where I can evaluate. So it's got that same really nice snappy performance that Seekman Pro does. You know, when I click on a row, it brings me right to that point in the assembly, um, which is very, very nice uh, functionality. Um, so that's reference guided in De Novo. I've got just a couple minutes. I'm just gonna show you one more workflow. It won't take too long. Um, we're gonna go back to uh, Navigator here. And our workflow, and it's this new workflow, which is in genomics, and it's the variant call format analysis. So uh, again, you can click on the workflow, it'll open the wizard, and what it's gonna ask me for now are just some VCF files. And so I'm gonna try to compare some VCF files. Sorry about this screen here. It's, I'll try to clean that up for you, there we go. So I'm gonna add some VCF files, and you'll notice we can, we can drag and drop uh, references. Um, in this case, actually, let's let's just download a genome package. So to really enhance VCF analysis, you can use our genome template packages that have dbSNP database information. They have uh, allele and genotype information from the exome variant server. This is ensemble annotation, so a really rich genome template. We can also import our our because I'm using a human database a variant annotation database, this checkbox down here. And if I hover over it, you'll see it contains allele and genotype frequencies, as well as functional and evolutionary uh, and clinical information about variation. So what I'm doing now is I'm combining all this very rich information from our genome template packages and our variant annotation database, and I'm gonna combine it with VCF files that oftentimes lack some very basic information. VCF files, oftentimes don't even have uh, amino acid changes. So you, you'll have um, you know, SNP positions, but not actually know if they're non-synonymous or synonymous, which really impairs your ability to, to make comparisons and apply filters when you're trying to compare VCF files. So this is really a nice, uh, easy to use tool. Just load a genome, load some VCF files, the hardware is very minimal for doing this, so I can run this locally. And then when I'm done, I can analyze in ArrayStar. And I'm just gonna show you, you know, what that would look like is here's ArrayStar with three um, exome, these are exome data sets from three different um, individuals. And let's see if I can, my screen got really big there. Let's see if I can reduce this, there we go. And so here's a, a variant table, and I'll just show you that here's one individual with the call. This is from the VCF. Here's the three variant calls, and I've just applied a non-synonymous uh, filter to show all the non-synonymous SNPs you know, in these three individuals. And you can see we have amino acid changes here, and I can load database information. So I can have a really rich um, analysis then of these VCF files, and I can compare them. And, that's a whole different webinar where we compare variants across multiple samples. But um, so it's just a, a nice way to use data from another pipeline and make those comparisons in DNA Star.